Hello, and welcome to Whittle Waffle episode. I'm not wearing my glasses. There's a good reason why I'm not wearing my glasses. So I'm going to get that out of the way first. My um, lovely husband bought me a, a lighting, little lighting ring, rig thing for a cord and to try and make the lighting a little bit better. And it's dead cool and it's got a holder for my phone and everything so that it's all there. But Can it not see them? They're just look. So, if it's distracting me to that level, I, I suspect it's going to be very distracting to you. So, I'm going to be without um, my glasses, which is weird. Uh, I don't often not wear my glasses these days, so it's a bit odd. But there you go. This is my face, all of it, bare in its glory. So, yeah, hello. We're still in lockdown. How are you? <laughs> Have you done anything nice? Have you eaten anything nice? Have you done much bacon? Um, yeah. Those of you with that is this has created lots of reading time and crafting time and binge watching time. I'm still jealous because I still have a two year old. So it's not the easiest thing in the world. In fact, my reading time has gone out of the window. But we'll get to that. We're going to do my sections are shit that I've read, stuff that I've listened to, uh, stuff that I've watched, any other geeky stuff, knitting. So that's what it's going to be. Um, so we'll start with what I've been reading. So I am reading. I'm reading this. This book is called The Night Raven by Sarah Painter. I like the cover. Um, uh, I'll read it back. So, Lydia has always known that she has no power, especially next to her infamous and more than slightly dodgy family, which is why she carved her own life as a private investigator far away from London. When a professional snafu forces her, I like that word, snafu, forces her home, the head of the family calls in a favour and Lydia finds herself investigating the disappearance of her cousin. Soon Lydia is neck deep in problems, her new flatmate is a homicidal ghost, the intriguing but forbidden DCI fleet is attack acting in a distinctly unprofessional manner and tensions between the old magical families are rising. The crows used to rule the roost and rumours claim they are still the strongest. The Silvers have a facility for lying and they run the finest law firm in London. The Pearl family were costermongers, I don't know what that is, and everybody knows that a pearly can sell feathers to a bird. The Fox family, well, the less said about the Fox family, the better. For 75 years, a tryst between the four families has held strong, but could the disappearance of Muddy Crow be the thing to break it? So there we go. That's what I'm reading at the minute. I'm not dead far in. Um, the other half bought me this for a Christmas Eve book a couple of years ago and um, I really was excited to read it and then I, I got, you know, other things happen, don't they? Um, but I am reading this at the moment. I'm a few chapters in. Um, it is written in typical PI style, which I really like. I like the first person PI style. And in fact, it would be really odd to read a PI book now, not how controversial would that be to read a PI book not written in the first person? Um, but this one is. So I'll let you know what I think when I'm further into it, but that is what I'm reading at the moment. And I am liking it. It's got a nice sort of um it feels like things are lots of things are happening but in a nicely paced manner, so it's not like boom boom boom, it's like kind of ooh, this is a bit weird. This is also a bit weird. And this is a bit weird. And no real explanation yet. And I quite like the way it's unfolding. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm enjoying that. Um, my prog did not come. My 2008 did not come on Saturday. It still has not come. Um, 
I'm in two minds whether to get in touch with um, 2000 a day about because we haven't had any post at all. Uh, have you had post? We haven't had any post. Um, and I know my mum sent, has sent some stuff and it hasn't come so I don't know if I should just hang on a couple more days and see. Maybe it's an issue with the post. Yeah, anyway, that's boring and by the by, but imagine if the post stops. Crazy, crazy world. Luckily, the case of wine that I ordered <laughs> came on Monday, so hey! <laughs> Didn't come through the post though, so. But I've got that, so we're set. What am I listening to? I am still listening to Cold Days by um, Jim Butcher. Um, The latest in the Dresden Files. It's not the latest one, there's one more, and then the new books are arriving. Um, and this one's a heist book, and it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. And it's like he has to team up with um some people who he's got into to warfare with a couple of times before, real nasty guys. Um and I'm I'm really enjoying it actually. I'm really you know how I had that hmm we go through and I'm really, really loving this one. It's really good, so I'm enjoying it. When I get to read it, when I get to listen to it, it's really good. I think that sort of heist situation suits the first person telling as well. So uh, it's fun uh, and I'm enjoying it and getting lots of appearances by favourite characters like Michael. If you're a fan of the Dresden Files, I'm a huge fan of Michael. I love Michael Carpenter. He's one of my favourite characters. Um, so yeah, it's nice, to, it's nice to have him and that sort of thing. So yeah, nice. I have just started listening to as well, um, but I'm really just not, not very far into it at all. Um, Just a Person by Tig Notoro. Uh, Tig Notoro is a, um, she's a comedian and actor. And if you're a geek, you've probably seen her in Star Trek Discovery. Um, she's a very, very, very funny comedian in the, the driest, driest style. Like she pushes the silences to the extreme like nobody else. Um, and she, she sort of became a, an overnight sensation after working for 25 years or something. Um, when she did a stand up a few days after she'd just been diagnosed with breast cancer, um, and that's how she started the gig. She says, hi, I've got cancer. Um, and that was quite an emotional thing. I haven't managed to listen to it. But anyway, she has got a doc. There's a documentary about her on Netflix, I think. And there were two of her stand-up um, specials on there as well. But they seem to have been taken down. Anyway, so <clears throat> we watched the stand-up special. And then we watched the documentary and then I bought the book because um, I wanted to... And it's it's narrated by her. I'm all over the shop, aren't I? Oh, God. T. It is um, narrated by Tig, which makes it really personal. I think if you're going to read that sort of book, it has to be narrated by the author. Otherwise, it's just weird, isn't it? It's like an autobiographical thing. Yeah. So I'm just just started it so I can't really tell you too much except for I really like I really really like Tignator I think she's absolutely hilarious um and it's we it's really weird isn't it when you you've um like watch documentaries and stand up and stuff you feel like you you know them a little bit which is stupid and ridiculous but you do and then you start thinking oh look there's there's Tig as if like you know I know her but She's fab, so I do recommend uh, watching or listening to anything that you can get your hands on by her and following her on Instagram because she's hilarious. So there you go. So that's what I'm listening to and that's what I'm reading. Flying through this today. Look at me. No tangents apart from the goggly eyes. Get me? Can't congratulate myself too much really because I've just gone off on a tangent about not going off on a tangent, so you know. Whatever. What. Right, what have I been watching? Oh, we'll not forget to put this segment in this time, eh? <laughs> Oops, a daisy. 
I know it did mean that I got to rope, rope the hubby into doing a little chat with us, which was really fun. I really enjoyed that. So, get my bad geekery. Ooh, I wobbled it. Sorry. Sorry for wobbling. Um, get Check out my bad geekery, right? Last night, I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp for the first time. What? I know. I'm appalling. And the thing is, I loved Ant-Man. I love Paul Rudd so much because he's just gorgeous and hilarious. And I've loved him since Clueless in the 90s when I went to see that at the pictures. And I just fell in love with him then and have remained, as most ladies my age, I feel are quite taken with Mr. Rudd. So yeah, I loved Ant-Man. I loved his appearance in um, Civil War. And then this one leads straight on after that. Uh, I can't believe I didn't watch it. I can't, I can't believe we haven't got round to it. We just keep thinking, oh yeah, we must get round to that. Uh, do you want to watch X? Do you want to watch X? Do you want to watch Y? Do you want to watch A, B, C, D? If I just not got round to it. So we finally sat down and watched it yesterday. And it was just awesome. It was fabulous. It was very, very funny. All of the... the um, this shrinking scenes of everything that the shrink can explode upwards is just so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> and he's incredible. In fact, all the cast's incredible. Um, particularly my favourite, Luis. I love him. And his um his spoilers. <laughs> um, his bit when he's talking about uh, the the history of um Scott since he's been in prison is just brilliant but my favorite bit is when he says and uh look at my hair i'm all business it was just the bit like i made i made us rewind it and watch it twice <laughs> that was so funny oh yeah i really loved ant-man and the wasp and michelle pfeiffer was in it and i hadn't known that because i'm a terrible geek obviously really rubbish geek or maybe i knew it and i'd forgotten it that seems quite likely. I forget a lot of stuff these days. I drink a lot and I don't sleep, so, you know. I don't drink that much these days, actually. <laughs> Apart from now, you know, obviously, because, you know, cheers. Lockdown, airport rules. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Loved it. And I think they're making another one, aren't they? Which is cool. Um... What else did I like about it? I liked the story. I liked that he hadn't gotten away scot-free for his appearance in Civil War. If you haven't watched any of the Marvel films, everything I'm saying to you means nothing. But um, I like that he didn't get away with it. He's been under house arrest for two years. Um, Hank Pym, the original Ant-Man, and his daughter, Scott's lover, aren't talking to him because he nicked off with the Ant-Man suit to go and help Captain America. Um, beat Tony Stark in Civil War and uh, he's been under house arrest for two years because he uh, brought the accords the thing he records his names I can't remember um, yeah and he's he's got a couple like he's got like two like what is it a week or something left to go on house arrest and they keep trying to catch him out of the house and he keeps having to get back in time and then going off and in doing these adventures and trying to rescue the original wasp, Michelle Pfeiffer, with the new wasp, Evangeline Lilly. So it's it was good. I like the buddy who wasn't she's not really buddy, was she? But she was great. Ghost. She was fab. Um and I liked to see uh Lawrence Fishburne in there, he's great. Um and the sort of rubbish bodies were fab as well. So I just loved the whole thing. It was great. I haven't actually got any complaints about it whatsoever. I've got no negatives. Nothing. I just really enjoy it. It's just a blast. And it's not a film taking itself too seriously. It's it's fun. And it's funny. And it's a bit of light-hearted entertainment. And actually, in lockdown, sometimes that's exactly what you want, isn't it? I haven't got any time for anything, even slightly dark right now. And I mean nothing. <laughs> the other half started to watch Interview with a Vampire and I was like, you know what, I can't do it. 
well, for lots of reasons, not just because it's a little bit dark, but also because Brad Pitt is so awful and dull in that film, right? That's what I used to think. I used to think Brad Pitt is so awful and dull and boring. Boring. In this film. And then I read the book. No, that's not true. Brad Pitt was playing that part perfectly. The character in the book is boring and dull and nobody cares about him. Oh, that book. Boring. Boring. Lots of Anne Rice fans out there. Knock yourself out. It's not for me. Do you know what? I can forgive anything in my entertainment. I can forgive some shoddy acting. I can forgive some shoddy SFX. I can forgive a slightly wonky storyline. I liked Van Helsing for example, because the one thing I don't want to be, be, the one thing to me is the most unforgivable, unforgivable thing in entertainment is to be bored. Entertainment should not be boring. That's my only rule. And it's why I have a lot of time for a lot of things people are niggly about. And I'm like, I was entertained. That's all. And that's all I actually expect out of anything is I want to be entertained and not bored. Interview with the vampire, the book. Boring. Bored. I think my sister loves that book. She's boring. <laughs> I am very shallow. I tell this to people all the time and they think I'm making a joke, but actually it's true. But depths of my shallowness. Anyway, why am I talking about this? Ah, Tom Cruise is great in the film though. He just is. Don't come at us with your Scientology nonsense. I know. I know what he is. Still would. Just saying. Still would. A man and the wasp. I can turn anything that we talk about Tom Cruise. Um, anywho, what I also watched this week, well, rewatched, was um, Doctor Strange. Did I mention we got Disney Plus? <laughs> got Disney Plus. Everything I've watched has <laughs> been on Disney Plus. I'm not joking, everything. Um, so, yeah, I watched Doctor Strange again. I've watched this film a lot. It might be one of the it might be my most watched Marvel film. Oh, Winter Soldier, Ragnarok. I love Doctor Strange. I think it's just I love I love I love everything about it. Actually, um, I love that he's a complete arsehole and arrogant shit. And although he learns some humility, he's still an arrogant shit at the end. Like there's definite character progression, isn't there? Um. I think the biggest bit of character progression is that I think, and he was accused of, isn't he? Of, um, till, it is till, till this one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, accuses him of being a coward and he was like, everything that I've done. And she was like, yeah, but you don't take risks and you don't help people who will mar your record and you're not brave. And you see that, you see that he's not brave and... He, he, he discovers that so although he's still sort of sorry you know honestly my, the amount I touch my face I'm just like anybody with sort of OCD about the COVID corona situation just be like I'm gonna knock off your fucking face well but anyway yeah so that's that's his real I mean like I fuck for me and I just I just love I love him and it I love him um If we were going to go into a Sherlock off, he would not win my Sherlock off. No. Because, I don't know, people shout over us because of what's his face, you know, the older fella. He was great. Jeremy, 
Jeremy Brett. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Um, and he is, he is good, don't get us wrong. But Johnny Nine Miller. He's just Sherlock for me now. Elementary, love it. Johnny Lee Miller, he is a Sherlock and he beats, beats Benedict in a Sherlock off. So, I'll fight you. Brilliant. I'm ready. <laughs> I've just watched six seasons of Elementary back to back. I'm ready for you. Brilliant. Um, yeah. I love him and I love the guy who plays Wang Her I think it is called also called Benedict can't remember his name I love him I think his character's great I love all the little jokes in there but that it's got like kind of it feels more serious but actually it's got some brilliant jokes and I love the dude whose name I can't remember who is in the Serenity film he's awesome uh yeah I love it I think it, it, it's just a beautiful spectacle to watch um, all the, the lovely touches and I think the effects are great especially like with his cape um, I love that scene where he's trying to um, run away oh he's trying to get an axe and the cape's pulling him back and pulling him back and trying to get him to go uh, and I love that the cape had character and I thought that was great so yeah I love Doctor Strange I've watched it a lot I'll watch it some more um, I didn't seem to be universally loved. What did you think? Let me know. If you've seen Doctor Strange, tell me what you think of it because I thought it was great. Really love it. There's a couple more things I've watched. <laughs> Disney Plus, yo. Me and Ari, who's my two-year-old, watched Moana <laughs> and I hadn't seen it. And I've seen a lot of Disney films. I have three children. I've seen a lot of um, Disney films, a lot. I'm going to cough now. <coughs> oh, she's touching her face and she's coughing. Fuck me, this is an advert of how not to do it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Disney films, but I had not seen Moana. Hadn't seen it. Hadn't seen it. And I think possibly when it came out, I didn't have a kid that was the right age for sort of Disney at that level. However, the 13 year old and the two year old have watched, we've watched it twice in two days and uh, I kind of stopped singing it. It was really, it was really nice. Um, I'm Mrs. No Negatives. <laughs> I, there was one tiny thing that I thought was weird. That um, the sort of nature goddess had such a tiny heart. Fit in a necklace, in a locket, that's how big her heart was. Surely a heart should be like a, not like, I guess it's a hint of a negative thing, but not really, is it? It's fantastic. I really liked it. All the songs are catchy, really catchy. The animation's beautiful, particularly the hair on um, Maui and uh, Moana. It's just gorgeous to look at. Um, I remember thinking the same thing when... Monsters Inc. came out and Sully, the big blue monster, the way his fur rippled and moved was just like I couldn't stop looking at it and I felt like a little bit like that watching uh, Mona and the hair. It's just beautiful. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. We're loving the Disney Plus, so yeah, I don't know if that's coming across at all. The other thing which I've been really, really, really enjoying also on Disney Plus <laughs> is... The world according to Jeff Goldblum. And it's just happy, happy, joy, joy with joy on top. So what it is, is every episode, um, Jeff investigates a thing. Much like Kevin Turvey. Kevin's here. Um, does anyone remember Kevin Turvey? I love Kevin Turvey. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Rick Mail before we did the other ones, possibly did this little five minute slot on another programme, I can't remember what it was, called Kevin Turvey Investigates and it's just mental and hilarious and he does it in a brummy accent. Everything's funny in a brummy accent. I don't know why, no offence, because like, my comedy accent. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's really funny. Anyway, so you take, it's very, the premise is similar each week. 
or each episode, Jeff takes a topic and investigates it. So he's done, we've watched tattoos, which is really interesting. And um, what else? Also, all sorts of different barbecue and all sorts of different things that he goes off and he investigates. Now, this works so well because Jeff Goldblum is so charming and nuts. And he walks with jazz on his hips. I'm just saying. Um and also on almost anybody else who says the things that he says while standing here he'd be creepy wouldn't he but he's not he should be creepy if you repeat back some of the things jeff goldblum says to people on that show <laughs> but, but he's not he's just he gets away with it because he's jeff goldblum god damn it and he's so He's like, has deep thoughts as well about the things that he's investigating and uh, a real sense of humour. And some of the stuff, and he'd come out with things all of the time, like, like, oh, this is my best day ever. He's just so adorable. And the, the show works because of Jeff Goldblum. Um, we watched an episode yesterday, it was about bikes, and I think because I've got like absolutely zero interest in bikes and I can actually barely ride one. Um, that was kind of harder for us to engage in, but still engaged because Jeff Goldblum, people. Jeff Goldblum. If you can get your hands on this to watch, forget everything else I've just mentioned. <laughs> Go and watch that because I'm telling you, you'll feel the world feels a slightly happier place. And I think we all really, really need that right now. So thank you, Jeff Goldblum, for being you, for being out there and being on my telly because I love you. Not as much as my cousin Joel, but I do. And not in that way either. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> Did we find someone I don't fancy? He's too adorable. In, in my opinion. In my opinion. He is gorgeous. He's adorable. I love him. Anyway. Watch it, honestly. If you have access to Disney Plus and you haven't watched any of these yet, please do. Do yourself a favour. Go and watch Jeff Goldblum being awesome and weird. He's just amazing. Oh, I wish I was as awesome and weird and gangly as Jeff Goldblum. So that brings us to other geeky stuff. Ooh. There's just one thing I really want to talk about, and I did tweet about this extensively. <laughs> I am Stace underscore W on Twitter, I think. I think so. Yeah, so I, I tweeted about this extensively and there's photos. So if you're interested in my crazy night, my crazy geeky night, then I suggest that you go and have a look at my Twitter stream. So, when I was a young girl, there was this advert on the telly for this board game and it looked like the best, most interesting, most amazing board game that I'd ever seen and my tiny mind was blown. And I was just like, oh, mum, mum, I need, I need it, I need it. Can I have it? Can I have it? And if it was for a birthday or a Christmas and we were not well off people and my mum said, well, that, that would be all. I just, I need it, I need it, I need it. Anyway, the day came, I opened my present, I got the game, I was ecstatic. The game was Hero Quest, by the way, in case I forgot to mention that. Hero Quest. Oh, it has wizards and barbarians and elves and orcs and goblins and sorcerers and evil wizards and oh, these amazing little parts to the game and there's tables and cabinets and skulls and treasure chests and you make them all up yourself and you can paint the characters I never painted mine but there you go um, that was a whole other thing that I didn't I was scared to do because they're so little and I didn't want to ruin them And my, anyway, anyway, anyway I was so excited would any fucker play that game with me? no, nobody would it's not a one player game it's a board game nobody would play the bloody thing with us nobody so I used to unpack it all and I used to set up all the, the rooms that had a rule book with quests in and that's how you had to set up the board and and then, you know, I would set it all up and then I would look at it and then I'd put it all the way again 
such was my tra tragic, sad, you know, preteen life. Anyway, I don't even know what happened to the bloody thing. Um, no, my mother it would have gone in the bin with all my books that she'd been when I moved out as well. But that's another story and we're still in therapy. So, you know. <laughs> my mother's not a reader. Anyway. Move on many, 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 like 30 minimum plus, I think plus, 30 plus. How old am I now? I'm 42, so yeah. 30-ish years later, I met my husband, now husband, and he is a lovely, delicious geek boy. Um, because once you go geek, you can't go back. It's nothing like a geeky partner who gets your shit. Anyway... He, I remember we were having a conversation about this game and he was like, oh, I wanted that game so bad and no one would get it for us. And I was like, oh, I had this game. No one would play with us. We were all like, oh, oh. Um, and uh, when growing up, we'd lived really close to each other and never met. I know, right? So, uh, last year for my birthday, he bought the bloody thing for us. And the... the the charge ridiculous amounts of money for this game because they don't make it anymore so they're all secondhand copies uh, um copies yeah they're all secondhand games um and he bought the pretty thing for us and on ebay they charge ridiculous amounts of money ridiculous um so when it came it, it this it's, it's being fully painted but it's beautiful oh it's so beautiful all the little figures are so perfectly painted. Somebody has loved this game. Almost all the character sheets are there. There's nobody had written on the um, quest book or anything. I was just so excited. Anyway, we had a small baby and blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. A year's gone by. We're on lockdown. Kids in bed. We're like, oh, what's happening? She was like, she was like, I was so excited. So excited. So I sat and I read the rule book in about five and a half minutes because let's bear in mind that it's age nine now. So then I give the rule book to my husband. I'll say, you read that. I'll go and get with drinks and I'll go and uh, do this and do that. I'll come back and I'll, I'll set the board up and everything. Oh my God, that man. Well, he did read the bloody thing eventually, about seven times in the end, where I'm just sitting there, sat down to play the game at eight o'clock, started playing the game at ten o'clock, and that was the fucking practice round. all this build up and all this like oh I had it and I couldn't play it and I didn't have it and I wanted to and this coming together and it should have been the most deeply romantic lovely no no because this is real life <laughs> if you just don't fucking pick a character now I'll end you We got going in the end and we ended up having a really, really good time and I really enjoyed it and it was fab. But I did nearly kill him in the lead up, <laughs> in the lead up to it. But anyway, now I know the rules and the setup and everything. Um, the next time we we'll play it, which will be soon because I really enjoyed it. Um, it should be easier and I may not kill him. And I think actually my teenage daughter would, um, my teenager would really like to play it too and I think it'll be easier to text explain it to her if she wants to play as well too. So yeah. Yes. Really loved it. But I can't like say, oh you must go and get it because obviously it, it's hard to get a hold of and they are charging silly prices for it on eBay and stuff at the minute. So I think it goes up and down, you know, but if if there's a glut of them they come down a bit. If there's not at that time they go back up. But yeah. So that was my sort of geekiness for the week. Was there anything else? I don't think there was. Um, no, I think that's about it. 
I did play a few rounds of cards afterwards and I have the most amazing deck of cards which came free with an SFX magazine but they're all 2000 AD um, cards although I do feel a little bit of guilt sometimes when I use it because I don't think the creator's got asked for permission or I don't know anything. They're fabulous. And Dread's a king obviously and Johnny Alpha's a king. You know, I like that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's the, the geeky side of our life for this fortnight. Week, fortnight. There are days, there are clean pyjamas. <laughs> Who knows what the fuck's going on with her, don't. So, that's the geekiness stuff. We're going to talk about knitting now, so if you're leaving me now, goodbye. Um, but if you're hanging around for the knitting, because why would you not, really? Now, I'm going to get a evangel vaginal. No, I'm not going to do that. Evangelical. <laughs> With my hand. With my halos. Oh, yeah. Halos of the eyes. Yeah. Here are some reasons why knitting is really good for you. Okay. If you have any form of arthritis or joint issues in your hands, it can actually really help to keep them moving. Um, so if you have stiffness in there, it can actually work them. You can also get square knitting needles, which if you do have any sort of joint problems or arthritis makes it easier. So it can be really beneficial from a physical point of view. Also, they do use knitting in pain clinics in this country as a pain relief. Not because it doesn't actually give you any pain relief, but what it does do is distract your brain so that your brain's not going, ah, the pain, the pain, the pain. It's sort of like veering it over here a little bit and it can be really beneficial for that too. Not for everybody, but it can. It does work for some people and that's why they do it. So that's another amazing thing about knitting. And another thing is that it can actually help with um, people who are suffering from any sort of mood, depression, low mood and things like that. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because, again, it's a distraction for, from, for your brain, but also the sort of repetition and the soothingness of, oh, sometimes the soothingness depends on what pattern you're following, can I just say. Um, but the, there's something about that which can really help lift your mood as well. It can bring your stress levels down. So it has all of these beneficial things, as well as it. the other thing it does is it's one of those things that um, engage both sides of your brain so that it can help. <laughs> Not that you would think so if you like talk to me for five minutes who can't remember anything and knits all the time. But apparently it is beneficial in sort of... Um, the same way like doing, I think it's crosswords and Sudoku and things like that can stimulate both sides of your brain, which is good for, for that and things like dementia and Alzheimer's and things like that. Beneficial, I said, not a cure or a total prevention, but it can help. So it has all of these physical and emotional uh, benefits before you get down to the fact that it's, it's a fun, interesting hobby and that it, it is addictive mind there is that um the fact that you can make things for yourself and people that you love i just i think that's amazing i mean i, I would otherwise why would my husband have so many hats and um my mother be drowning in socks but i think it's a really lovely thing to give somebody as a gift uh the gift of your time and that's what uh, knitting. Sometimes, very occasionally, I'll get people ask me to do stuff for them, and I won't. I won't. I won't. So, please don't ask because this is the thing. It's my hobby and it's my time. So that if I want, if I was going to work, do this for a job, you would have to pay me, <laughs> at the very least, um, minimum wage. And if you think that it takes about 16 hours or 16 hours, 16 to 20 hours to make a pair of socks, are you really going to pay that for a pair of socks? So if I choose to make you a pair of socks, then I'm giving you 20 hours of my life. <laughs> How many pairs of socks have I knit you as well? Are you watching? How much do I love you? <laughs> 
but that's true and I think you could, there's not a better there's no there's no way to tell someone you love them more I don't, I don't think so you can clothe your babies and your friends and your family and they can know every time that they put that thing on that you were thinking about them and I think how freaking nice is that also there's just the actual pleasure of really nice wool going through your fingers I made mean, that sound a little bit sexual which it isn't but this for example is a really really lovely um alpaca it's the softest softest it's got very the light's a bit bright for it actually it's got a very faint sort of fuzzy halo and it's so soft so soft and delicious like there's just no itchiness or scratchiness or anything and what i'm making out of that is a cardigan for my baby because nobody deserves the bestest most beautiful soft lovely wool next to that skin than somebody who's got really new skin and people who've got really old skin <laughs> the best feeling in the world so yeah there you go there's my why you should knit <laughs> um it's got so many benefits it really does it can also help believe it or not with things like <clears throat> math skills now maths i am not good at and i had to do today uh for a knitting pattern so i want to knit um a jumper for ari the pattern asks you to make it out the pattern has made it using one particular kind of wool which is called roan lima which is not produced anymore so you can't you can't make the cardigan in that wool so then to try and find a replacement wool you can't just go oh well that's an aran I'll just make it out of any other iron because it depends because there's things like drape and if you're doing this particular stitches some fibers cope with that better than others um some are thicker some are thinner it's not exactly the same so you have to look for something that's more of a substitute so what you're looking for is you're looking for so in the Rowan Lima which is a 50 gram ball and you get 120 meters in the ball so you need to have something that's roughly the same because then the weight's roughly about the same so hopefully uh, your stitch count should be about the same <sighs> but in the pattern it hadn't given you the yardage or the meterage or whatever you prefer to work in <clears throat> so i had to go online and look up the row and lima to see what it came in and how many yards that you got for that so it was 120 meters per 50 grams and it took eight balls so then you have to do 120 times eight to find out the yardage that you need and then you can go hunting for a wool of a and, and to find out what it was what the fiber it was made out of so that you can get something similar so that you're going to if you want your garment to look the same or have the same sort of fit same sort of drape then you want something that's fairly similar of construction and I think that one was a chain yarn as well anyway getting very te technical here and I don't need to so what you've got then is you've got some maths you've got some other uh, sort of household skills and working out costs and costs per meter and things like that to make sure you're getting good value for money and that knowing um, what fibers behave in what way is all very interesting to me possibly not very interesting to you, <laughs> to you because you have not got the book yet but you know just talk to me and I can I can hook you up I'm just saying I can hook you up I know a guy I know a girl it's me <laughs> I can hook you up okay go in okay knitting hey chilling so yeah maths as well mm -hmm. lots of good things anyway so Getting back to what I'm knitting. So I'm knitting a cardigan called G'day. G'day? Like how Australians say it, not how Geordies say it. <laughs> um, and I can't remember who is the designer, but I'll stick that on the blog if I remember to do a blog this week. Jo Georgia, somebody, Helen, Georgia Helen possibly. Good day. Now I've made this cardigan before a couple of times. I've made it for Ari when she was littler and I made it for a friend for his little girl. Um, if you ask me to make baby stuff, I will. <laughs> Don't all ask us, but 
I love making the baby stuff. It's one of my favourite things to do. Anyway, so this is the start of a cardigan blade or not. So what you've got is just a long kind of strip. I'm knitting it on circular needles, but I'm knitting it back and forward. So you can imagine that it's on straight needles. You could knit it on straight needles, but I prefer um, circular needles that take the weight of the yarn better than when you've got them all on straight, so all, all the needles, all the, the weight on one side can hurt my wrist. I don't need my wrist hurting, thank you very much. Anyway, so this is knit from the top down. So if you can imagine, if we come round, this is the where the cardigan will fasten here. And I'm knitting, you can see the increased rows are here and here and here. And we've got one more increased rows and then I'll put a certain amount of stitches on each side to one side and then they'll be for the sleeves and then I'll keep knitting down the body in stock and stitch. So this has got a stitch at the top which is really squishy and beautiful and soft and delicious. Um, and then once we get back to past to about here, those stitches go in a holder and a knit stock and stitch down. Um, and it's a lovely pattern and it's designed because this bit has got a stitch to be stripy so that each garter ridge is a different colour and then the main body is the one, one you choose one colour and you knit down with that but um, I didn't have anything else in this lovely alpaca so I decided just to make it all one colour so all I just did is in the instructions when it says change colour I just don't bother and it's been very nice to knit so far and I'm really enjoying it and it's I kind of I've knitted a couple of times now and it's a really nice practical Cardi for kids. It's got one button that goes on the top and in fact I didn't even put that button on Ari's last one because I knew I wasn't going to, it wasn't going to be a fight. It was just really for, you know, coming back from the beach and the, if we ever get to do that again, um, to, to fling on sort of thing and it doesn't need to have buttons really. There you go. So that's one thing that I'm knitting and the only other thing that I'm knitting at the moment until the wool that I've ordered for the other two jumpers and I'm actually hot I've got this half um cast off here um is another blanket square you can see this is left over that's the back holding on to these stitches here that's the back and this is the front so this is the start of one of those big blanket squares that I made Ari blanket but this one's going to be for uh, mine and Mark, mine and Mark's bit so it's going to it's going to take a long time it's just another square at the moment and it's all leftover wool again and it's a good way I've got lots and lots of leftover sock weight wool and it's a really nice and it'll be an ongoing project forever that one well not forever I'll get finished eventually but it's you know one that I can always pick up and put down and I can knit ferociously on it when I'm watching if I'm any of other knitters watching do you if there's an exciting bit happening in the film or, or the telly thing that you're watching do you knit faster <laughs> I do that oh my god <laughs> how will they escape this <laughs> and then back to now and oh my god I'm an amazing um, ambassador for the knitting community, I think you find. So yeah, that's all I'm in at the minute. I haven't done any spinning. What is my camera doing? Is it moving? Is it just me? Anyway, I haven't done any spinning this week, um, but I am planning to. The other half is going to help me do a spinning video because I think it'll work better with two cameras. Um, one sort of from the top and one from the side so you can see what I'm doing. So he's going to have to help me do that. Um, I've said he can direct. The last time he directed me in anything he tried to fire us. So... True story, if you're interested, because I want to talk about it now. So my cousin Chris and my other half and their friend, um, they made a short film several years ago, a very short horror film called Latch. 
and it did really well they got a lot of views and it put in for a few um competitions and stuff and it got reviewed all over and they were really pleased with it so they decided to make a second one um my husband starred in the first one and then i was the star, star of the second one um and him and chris directed and wrote it and he was my my cousin chris was an amazing director and my husband was not but i think possibly because i was his wife so <laughs> he did try and fire me because i got a bottle of vertigo during filming and uh, i had to miss I, I couldn't do it and he was just like you're not thinking of the good of the film you're not thinking of the good of the film i think we should get something else chris is trying to fire me he's like don't worry stay someone let him fire he was deadly serious Yes, reader, I'm married. <laughs> yeah, that was before we were married as well. He tried to fire us off the film. Anyway, if you're interested, both of those short films are on YouTube. I will try and remember to link to them in my blog. They're called The Latch and uh, Latcher is the second one, the one that I was in, um, which he likes to tell me has nowhere near the same amount of views and it's because nobody likes me playing with a box next door okay, yeah. anyway <laughs> do us a favor just watch mine get those likes going up all 12 of you watching <laughs> anyway so that's it the latch and latch and they're really good no i'm not just saying that because i was in one of them i was just so proud of the boys that did such a good job um chris jonesy in in, in the dutton there and um had a fantastic cameraman as well on my one um who is a drone expert as well so there's some of the shots are brilliant it's definitely worth looking at if you're interested um the latch and latcher so yes there's that i don't know how i, I got on to talk about this again oh direct yeah so yeah baby spinning video will come eventually um in the meantime I'm sorry if you can hear any crazy toenails on the wooden floor. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all I've got to talk about this week. Um, I'm sorry about how many times I say um and touch my face. I'm a terrible person. And on that note... <laughs> oh, if you have any questions... Oh, damn it. I said I was going into... Do you know what's nice? Dogs. Dogs are nice, aren't they? So I was going to introduce myself at the start and everything and I totally did not do that again. So if you don't know who I am, <laughs> my name's Stacey Will. I am Will Waffle on Instagram and Stace underscore W on Twitter, I think. I think. I think so. Try that. <laughs> but I'm definitely Will Waffle on Instagram. If you've got any questions you would like to ask us, if you'd like me to teach you to knit, I'm sure we could set something up. Zoom's a big thing at the moment, I hear. Um, if you've got any questions, if you've got any comments, um, if you want to just tell us to go away, that's all fine. Do that. <laughs> Stop touching your face, bitch. Kill my face. Uh, yeah, so yes, Instagram, Twitter, and the blog is... Um, whittlewaffle.blogspot.co.uk you can find I didn't do one for the last one um, but I will do one for this one so I can put in links uh, to Latch and Latcher and some other things yeah. I think that's it so before my cat totally throws us all off balance because I need that to be thrown off balance I'll say goodbye and I'll see you soon and take care